Daniel 6. Daniel 6 and 10, if you were following verses. Daniel 6 and 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He kneeled down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Before you sit down, will you turn to your neighbor, look him dead in the eye? Repeat these words after us, please. Say, good morning, neighbor. Good morning, neighbor. Ask them, how, how are you? Say, with God's help, help. preacher going to talk about, I dare you Amen. to pray. Amen. I dare you to pray. Prayer is very important. And only somebody that don't want us to pray is the devil. Right. Is there anybody here believe in the power of prayer? Right. Is there anybody here believe that the only reason I'm here is because of the power of prayer? Right. The late Dr. E.B. Hill <coughs> tells the story of when he was getting ready to go to college. His mother uh, put him on a train, and at the train station, she gave him a sack lunch, $5, kissed him on the forehead, and said, Mama will be praying for you. And as he went to Prayer View and got on the campus, he was standing in the register line, and he saw people with their parents. Some was paying cash, some was writing checks. And he knew all he had was $5. <laughs> so as he was getting ready to go to be next in line, he heard somebody call his name E.V. Hill, E.V. Hill. He said, here I Ham, and the man says to him, you're in the wrong line. You're in the paying line, but you need to be in the scholarship line. <laughs> and as he got out of the line, in his head, he could hear his mama say, mama will be praying for you. Right. <clears throat> Anybody here know that prayer does work? Right. In our text today, we discovered that Daniel was a man of prayer. Right. And one of our problems, we don't have enough praying men. Right. Hello, somebody. We, right. we like to plan before we pray. But praying always go before playing. Right. Have we got a witness? Yeah. And, and, and we can't just wait till we get to church to pray. The book said that Daniel prayed at home. And brothers, there ought to be some prayer going on at your house. And somebody ought to say amen. amen. See, it's, 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 it's kind of sad to come to the church house and pay for some, pray for somebody else's child and you won't pray for your own child. It's sad to come to church house and pray for somebody else's wife and you won't pray for your own wife. Prayer has to go on at your house. Daniel teaches us that he was a praying man. And we ought not just pray when we get in trouble. You ought to be on speaking terms with God. Have I got a witness? When I look at the text, I look at the text, <coughs> Daniel had favor with the king. And the king was getting ready to elevate Daniel, but Daniel had some haters. Anybody know you always got haters hanging around? Daniel 
had some haters, and Daniel was an upright man. They could not find any fault in Daniel, so they tricked the king to write this decree because they knew that Daniel was a praying man. And they felt as though that they would trap Daniel because he was going to keep on praying. And I want to know today, do we have any praying men in this house? Is there any praying women in this house? We got to believe that God does answer prayer. When I look at the dilemma, first of all, I see the dilemma that Daniel is in. The dilemma is that the king has signed a decree that anybody caught praying is going to be thrown in the lion's den. And in spite of the decree, in spite of the decree, Daniel kept on praying. I said, in spite of what the king had said, Daniel kept on praying. In spite of what the king said, Daniel kept on praying. The book says that Daniel knew that the decree had been signed. And also Daniel knew that he would have to go in the lion's den if he was caught. But you know what Daniel believed? He believed in the power of prayer. He believed in the power of God because Daniel knew what happened to the Hebrew boy. The Hebrew boys took a stand and they said, our God whom we serve is able. If he doesn't deliver us, it's not because he's not able. There's somebody here faced with a dilemma this morning, and you got to know that God is able. You can't sell out to your circumstance. You got to know that God is able. You got to put your trust in God. See, so many people have their trust in man, but you can't put your trust in man. Man is just like Donald Trump. He'll tell you one thing in one hour and tell you another. Y'all ain't hearing me. You can't put your trust in God. Some folk got their trust in the Social Security check, but you, you can't put your trust in the retirement or Social Security check. You got to put your trust in God to know that God is your source. If Social Security dry up, God ain't going to dry up. I wish I had a witness. I heard the psalmist says, I've been young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsake him, nor his seed beg bread. So when, when, when I have a, a dilemma and I can't find my way out, I'm going to trust God. Listen, the devil don't want you to pray. The devil don't want you to pray. You know why? Because when you pray, you in touch with three worlds at the same time. Your prayer goes up to God and worship goes out to man and work and go down to Satan in warfare. So when you pray, you worship working and warring all at the same time. And the devil don't want you to pray. Listen, the book said that Daniel went home. Prayer starts at home. Don't start at the church house, but it starts at home. When, when, when you get to the church and that's your first prayer, that's a prayer too late. <laughs> you you, you should have prayed before you left home. I wish I had a witness there. You, you, you see, you've got to pray and ask God to fix your heart. That, that's reading people sit like a bump sitting on the log and never say nothing because they don't pray. And when they leave home, they sing in a song, I shall not be moved. I don't care what's going on in the worship. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. But when you know God's been good to you, somebody ought to say something. The book said that the redeemed of the Lord ought to say something. But not only there's a limit in the text, but I see the determination in the text because in spite of the decree, in spite of the dilemma, but he was determined to keep his habits up. And his habit was he prayed three times a day with his window up toward Jerusalem, and he prayed on his knees. 
you know, we don't pray on our knees no more. Now, you know, I understand when you get older, you can't get down there. Come on, talk to me. And the Lord understands a whole lot of us can't get down on our knees, but some folk can get down on their knees and still don't get on the knee. But see, the knee bound is a sure sign of humility. And sometimes when you pray and you're on your knees, you're still too high. Sometimes you got to prostrate yourself. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Before God and Daniel prayed three times a day, even though they dared him not to pray. He prayed three times a day. Daniel could have closed the window, but he boldly opened up his window to pray. Can I ask you a question? God has blessed us with all of these fine homes. We got a living room, bedroom, kitchen, dining room, a place for the dog, a place for the cat. But I want to ask you, where in your house have you set aside that you and God do business? Oh, y'all don't got quiet on that. Uh, there ought to be somewhere that reminds you when you pass that spot, this is where I meet God. Do, do, do you really talk to him at your house? I said, do you really talk to him? Big Mama said, just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. I wish I was talking to some prayer folks today. Anybody here know prayer works? Listen, if, if, if the Lord, if the Lord, if the Lord said uh, uh, to you today, bring me your prayer time sheet. Let, let's, let bring, bring me your prayer time sheet uh, for just last week. 168 hours in a week. And, and, and said, wait a minute, before you bring your time sheet, bring your cell phone bill. <laughs> and and we going to compare your cell phone bill to my prayer time sheet. And, and it looked like you talked to Joe Boy and Bobo and Sally Sue yes, more than you talked to me. I wish I had a witness here. And all of them got problems. But I'm the one who's able to answer and solve your problem, and you skipped over me. I heard Big Mama say, Jesus is on the main line, and all you got to do is call him up and tell him what you want. Daniel, pray. Daniel, pray. In spite of the dare, Daniel, pray. Three times a day. Now, how many times do we pray a day? Now, who said that you got to pray with your eyes closed? The Lord ain't never told you you got to pray with your eyes closed. Now, anybody pray driving your car? I hope your eyes ain't closed when you drive your car. But you've got to be sincere when you pray. And, and when you pray, your heart's got to be right. Too many of us got too much mess in our heart. It, it, you, you, you cannot go around not speaking to one another and think God's going to answer your prayer. Right. You, we're saying, precious Lord, take my hand and won't shake your neighbor's hand. Yeah. It's something wrong with that. You got to make sure your heart is right. And then you pray three times a day with the window lifted up. Knowing that he was going to be thrown in the lion's den. But in spite of that, Daniel had his trust in God. Somebody facing something this morning. Who's your trust in? You got to put your trust in God. And Daniel knew that he was going to go to the lion's den, and they caught Daniel praying. And guess what? The king couldn't go back on the decree. And the king liked Daniel, but he couldn't go back on what he had signed. So he had to throw Daniel in the lion's den. And they would keep the lion starved. So when somebody was thrown in the lion's den, they would immediately 
Tamar. <laughs> so Daniel was determined in spite of what the decree was. He was determined to keep on praying. And I just want to know, is there anybody determined to keep on praying? Yeah. Sometimes things will happen in your life and you won't even pray. Come on, talk to me. We in church. Sometimes you can get so down in Sorrow's Valley that you don't even feel like praying. But Daniel says, I'm going to be determined to stick with my habit. Throw me in the lion's den if they want to, but I'm going to stick with God. There's somebody here this morning, you ought to want to stick with God. No matter what the test might be, but I'm going to stick with God. All right, all right. They threw him in the lion's den. They threw him in the lion's den. These lions are hungry. But anybody here know you serve a God who goes before you? God will go before you. I said God will go before you. And God had gone before Daniel right. and he had changed the nature of those lines to lay down like little lambs. Right. Have I got a witness? You, you, you remember Jesus sleeping on the ship in the storm right. and he was asleep on that ship and they had to go wake him up. Master, don't you care that we perish? And they woke up Jesus. Do you know why he was able to sleep in the storm? I'm so glad you asked me. He was, the reason he was able to sleep in the storm is he had prayed in the calm. I wish I had a witness there. Nowhere in the text do you see Daniel praying in the lion's den. Daniel never offered one prayer before he got in, y'all ain't hearing me, before he got in the lion's den. He did all of his praying before he got to the lion's den. Y'all not listening to me. And when he was in the lion's den, God had gone before him and changed the nature of the lions. Somebody said God made the lions lay down like little lambs and said Daniel use one line as his pillar. Use one line as his mattress and use one line as his foot. Rest. And he sung a lullaby singing all day all night. Angels and lions keep watch over me. If there anybody here know God will make a way out of no way. Somebody don't know how you're going to make it tomorrow. You don't have to know how you're going to make it long as you know God hold tomorrow in your hand. In his hand, Daniel put all of his faith and trust in God. And guess what? Daniel was delivered from the lion's den. And I need to tell somebody here at the Salem Institutional Church that same God who delivered Daniel is still available to deliver you. Whatever your situation may be, God is an able God. If there anybody here know what prayer can do, anybody here can testify, I know what prayer can do. Some of us here this morning, the only reason you in church right now, because you had a praying mama, a praying grandmama, when you didn't have sense enough to pray for for yourself somebody call your name is there anybody you know that prayer does work I dare you to fall down on your knees and have a little talk with Jesus just a little talk will make everything alright ain't gone alright he's able to deliver you you have somebody here needs a turnaround and God is able
able to turn it around. Can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout praise the Lord? Sometime when you pray, you got to have enough faith to get up thanking him before he answered the prayer. I call that giving praise on credit. Every now and then, you got to praise him on credit. Surely, if you can shop on credit, Brother Levine, I can praise him on credit. There's somebody here you're going through this morning. You, you have enough faith to say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I've got enough faith to believe you're able to do it. And since I know you're able to do it, I'm going to lift up holy hand and bless your name on credit. If there anybody here at the Salem Church got enough faith to just shout hallelujah. If there anybody here at the Salem Church got enough faith to tell him thank you Jesus. You know I discovered uh, in the day's world uh, we don't mind giving God uh, a hand clap of praise. Uh, but the only danger with that uh, you ought not let your hand do uh, more than what your mouth do. Uh, he said I will bless the Lord at all times uh, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, now some people are ashamed to shout hallelujah. Some people are ashamed to shout praise in name. I want to tell you, whoever you sit next to, they didn't bring you out. Whoever you sit next to, they don't know your story. Whoever you sit next to, they don't know how sick you were. Whoever you sit next to, they don't know how how you down you were whoever you sit next to they don't know your story and since God brought me out since God delivered me every chance I get I'm gonna lift up holy hand I wish I had about 10 people who didn't mind lifting up your hand and blessing the Lord he He's worthy. I said he's worthy. Anybody here know God is worthy. He's worthy of all of my praise. I'm out of here. Thank you, Pastor, for letting the old preacher come. But I'm on my way to my seat. Ain't God all right? There was a lady who was trying to bring her children. A single mother. Yes, sir. Had five kids and one day they was at school and she discovered was no food in the house and she went down to the corner store and asked the man will you let me have food on credit he said you already owe me and I can't let you have no food she went home got down on the knees and talk to God said Lord my children are hungry and they're going to need food when they come from school ain't God alright he told her go in the room and write this prayer she went in the room and wrote a prayer out put it in the envelope and the Lord said when you get there tell the man you're going to pay for the grocery with your prayer. Ain't God all right? When she went back, she told the man, the Lord told me to tell you that this prayer is going to pay for my grocery. 
minutes, uh, the man looked at her funny and started laughing. Uh, other people was in the store uh, and they gathered around. He said, I tell you what you do. Uh, you put your prayer on this side of the scale and I'm going to put groceries uh, on the other side. Uh, and if your prayer uh, hold the scale down, uh, I'll give you the groceries. Uh, he put bread on the scale. Uh, scale didn't move. Uh, he put, uh, put eggs on the scales. Uh, scale didn't move. Uh, he put ham on the scale. Uh, scale didn't move. Uh, he put ice cream on the scales. Uh, scale didn't move. Uh, put flour on the scale. Uh, scale didn't move. Uh, and uh, she picked up her groceries. Uh, went out the store singing. I told you. The Lord told me my prayer was going to buy these groceries. I told you the Lord will make a way. Ain't God all right? The old man threw the prayer on the shelf. And then about a month or so later, he was cleaning off the shelf. And he ran across that prayer. He said, this is the prayer that that old lady had and beat me out of my groceries. I never read it. Let me read it and see what it said. And as he unwrapped it, all it said on the letter was, give us this day our daily prayer. If there anybody here, no God will make a way. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Ah! Yes, she will. Ah!